Hi and welcome back to the channel. So today is going to be a quick video um, with NaNoWriMo coming up here in just a few days. I thought it'd be good to share my Scrivener template that I have for NaNoWriMo. Uh, for those of you who want to give it a try, I'll have a download in the link below. You can give it that a shot, but I just want to give you a quick overview of what it is and how to use it. So this is my uh, NaNoWriMo basic template. And um, I have a few little uh, documents here that you want to just keep in mind and I'm going to show you in my actual file I'm going to use this here how to use it well but there's a front page here just to kind of remind you how to use the template you can read it on your own time but in the planning mode here there's uh, several folders you have the planning folder the novel by day folder and then all your research stuff which is uh, standard in uh, Scrivener so in the basic story planning you can go into the folder if you want uh, it just gives you an overview of how to join NaNoWriMo and gives you some uh, tips on how to find a good story. Um, you'll notice that I have all the books that I'm reviewing on my writer's bookshelf is already in here. You can get a preview of some of the ones that are coming, uh, except for Structure Your Novel. That one's not on my list this year. Uh, I will do that probably in Season 2, most likely. But... Uh, yeah, just give yourself a chance to you know look through the page um, just so you can get a feel for how to do this. And then I have on the document overview, this is where you put all your pre-planning. And then your tracking elements is uh, you just record your daily progress. You don't actually have to do this, but it's good for your records. It will be something you have to type in manually. So you just you know replace the pound signs with the current year. Uh, if you're brave enough to write 2020 in here, go ahead and do that. Uh, if the idea of writing anything 2020 frightens you and wouldn't be surprised the way this year is gone. Um, well, then just leave the pounds, that doesn't matter, but you should ideally list the year uh, just for your own records. And then after NaNoWriMo is what you need to write in case you don't finish your story. This is where you would make notes of what you need to do when you transfer it to a new draft and continue on from there. So I'm going to actually go into the one I've started just to give you a look at what it looks like. So give me one second to pull that up. So for this year, I've already started filling out my quick and dirty story reminders. This is just to kind of give me an overview of what I want to work on. So this is going to be for a book that I actually wanted to do years ago. I just never got around to it. And I'm actually, I'm kind of not sure if I even should do it this year either because I do have so many other projects to work on. And I feel like this is just one more to add to the list. So I'm, I'm still not entirely sure that I'm going to do this for NaNoWriMo or if I'm going to do something else. But I did fill in the elements just to make sure that I have something should I work on this so um, you can see how I set this up I you know, filled in the general information genre and then of course gave a quick synopsis for what I want to do with this I have not started my story notes yet because I haven't fully thought it out but I you know I typically write as I go so sometimes I'll fill these things in as I determine what I need but um, I'll probably give like a just a quick overview before I start, just so I have some kind of plan. And then, of course, you know, you have your um, characters, and this is going to be the... This was originally going to be a standalone story. Um, again, I had wanted to do this back in 2010, but or by 2010. I actually want, I came up with the idea sooner than that, but um, because of just the way I, I plan my books, I, you know, never know what's going to be relevant at a given time, so I just kind of wait um, until I get... Until I, have a reason to get around to it and this particular story i feel like um the opportunity has already passed because it's you know centers on themes that at the time were never going to happen and now they've already happened so you know live and learn but um i was going to make this part of my uh series on just basically in times of madness is the name of the series which i've not ironically not started even on the first book yet but i've kind of picked up books two and three and this will be book four um, which they're all basically connected by this character, Stanley Redding. So that's just kind of a preview of things to come in the future. But that's really the only connecting element they all have is the one character. Uh, they're not really, they don't need to be in a series, but they all kind of have similar thematic elements. So that's the reason why they fit in. But you can see that I'm still kind of figuring out my way through, you know, trying to figure out who characters' names are. And I'll probably, uh, I'll either come up with the names at the end before I start the actual fill-in or I'll, I'll I'll just leave them TBD until I write them in the text so sometimes I, I work that way but anyway um, 
this is where I would go ahead and continue to fill in all my my elements so I have a, a clear path when I do start writing. So I do have my theme in place, um, and Stephen Pressfield says that you know you should have your uh, theme taped on your monitor and make sure every scene reflects that. Uh, I think it's good advice. So you know, I'll see if I can stick to it. Um, and I have my tracking elements have not been filled in because it's not November and then of course after won't be filled in until December. But um, basically the way this works is when you go into the novel by day, you've got all your days that are separated and this is where you'd actually start. So if I were to say um, this is my story, um, it begins here, you'll find that I've got words down here in the bottom. I have words uh, 7 out of 167. Uh, the 1667 is how many words NaNoWriMo suggests you do in a day in order to hit the 50,000 by the end of the month. Um, you can change that. So if you go down into this little window here and hit the red button, you can actually change what your target is. So if you are do having a really good day and you want to take it easy the next, or maybe you're like me and you uh, spend less time on weekends than you do on during the week to write, you may want to change your balance. Or maybe you're just in a bad mood and you just want to get something. So you, I might change this to 500. So if I do that, change it to 500 and hit OK, um, you'll see that my little bar just went up higher because my requirement went down. Now I'm not going to do that. I am going to keep it to 167. Um, just because I think it's a good idea to stay on track. But when you go into the projects here, project statistics, uh, I do have it set up to track uh, only what's in the day listing. So um, this does not factor in everything I have up in the basic story planning. So this is going to be really accurate to your daily counts as long as you write within the day. This is uh, really up to the honor system. You can write past midnight and still count it as day one if you want, because I think NaNoWriMo's website allows you to input um, afterward. But if you're just if you, it saves you the problem of having to figure out what you did each day. All you have to do is just stick to the day, and, um, and it'll keep you in line. So of course, by the time you get to the end of day 30, you'll have your project overview will still also be accurate, and then. Um, if you focus on the target board, you can see exactly what you're doing for today. And if you want to set a session target, you can do that as well. So it's really simple and straightforward. It's a good way to keep up with your NaNoWriMo goals. Um, I highly recommend it. So if you are interested, go ahead and download it. You will need to save as. So this is not going to be a template. This will be the actual uh, NaNoWriMo, NaNoWriMo uh, template or folder, um, or the file rather. So what you'll need to do is when you download it and open it, you'll need to save as and then whatever you want to title your actual Scrivener file. So I called my NaNoWriMo 2020 because that's just telling me what year I'm working out of. Uh, I have one for uh, 2019. That was when I did uh, my washed up pirate book that I still have to go back and finish. But um, yeah, if you like this, go ahead and download it and use it. Make sure you um, leave me a comment and tell me that you... Uh, like it or are using it um, one thing I would like to know is I just like to know how many are using it so if you could hit the, the like when you uh, download it uh, it would be nice I'd like to know who uh, how useful my program is so anyway that's all uh, hope you uh, get started on NaNoWriMo this year hope you finish your book hope you get it published uh, hope it doesn't drive you nuts so with that my laundry's done so have a good day bye